Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, merciful judge, you are the inexhaustible fountain of forgiveness. Replace our hearts of stone with hearts that love and adore you, that we may delight in doing your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. reading from Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? 
So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. I am in the place of God. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way he assured them, speaking kindly to them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand for or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord, so that when, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the questions that has pursued me in my life is this. How often should I forgive someone? I bet you don't have to think very long before someone comes to mind who has required forgiveness to be offered more than on one occasion. The disciples were hoping to get a straight answer from Jesus, a number, if you will. When once met, forgiveness was no longer required. It was forgiveness with an expiration date. If someone sins against me, Jesus, how often should I forgive? Seven times? Well, that was a random response, but Jesus says not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. 
If you read Jesus' words literally, then you're off the hook when the same person sins against you or breaks your heart 78 times. But most commentators agree that 77 times is a euphemism for you don't ever get to stop forgiving someone. When is it safe to stop forgiving others? In a word, never. Outside loving our enemies and praying for those who persecute us, Forgiving others is definitely in the top five most difficult practices for followers of Jesus, especially when Jesus refuses to put an expiration date on forgiving others. Although Peter in today's gospel reading is talking about forgiving church people, forgiveness figures into our relationships uh, with those we love also, including uh, our relationships with our relationship with God, with strangers, with people we we would label as enemy, and even with ourselves. In fact, sometimes self forgiveness is the hardest forgiveness of all. Until fairly recently, we assumed that forgiveness was primarily an emotional or theological concern, something that is good for the soul. But neuroscience is now teaching us that forgiveness is also important to our health and well being. You probably already know this, but withholding forgiveness deeply affects our emotional emotional and mental and physical health. This is true both for individuals and communities. Hanging on to pain does something to our personal and social bodies. We don't have to look very far to see how withholding forgiveness has a way of sowing seeds of bitterness and hostility that, when not dealt with, can erupt with deadly consequences. Forgiveness is not our natural default. I would say that rage is. It is the dark shadow of self-righteousness. Our primal brains understand interactions in fight or flight mode, which in turn tend to invert the golden rule so that instead of doing to others as you would have them do to you, the rule becomes do to others as they have done to you. Or even worse, the iron rule, do to others before they do it to you. Another obstacle to forgiving others are all the qualifications and conditions we establish before forgiveness can be extended. First, we withhold forgiveness because we don't feel that the other person has met or arisen to the threshold of apology, remorse, and regret to somehow warrant our forgiveness. In some cases, something more tangible than I'm sorry is even required. There has to be some action, some grand gesture to validate true contrition has occurred. And sometimes, even when every condition and stipulation has been met, we may still resist offering forgiveness, not fully appreciating the power of our pride at a subconscious level. Even worse, we withhold forgiveness because we have completely forgotten or never really had a true appreciation of how much God has forgiven us. And it's this lack of awareness of what God has done for us in Jesus that the servant in the parable who has forgiven a huge debt but is unwilling to forgive a small one has forgotten. I spent a lot of time over the years trying to figure out how to forgive certain people in my, in my life, especially some people from my past. And, and I keep coming back to images like uh, having closed fisted hands and tightly wound knots inside me. And I know that opening my hands and unwinding and loosening those knots all point to a kind of release. And that's the best way I've come to think of forgiveness. I think I've resisted that simple definition of forgiveness as release for years because all I could think about was the injustice of releasing someone from bearing responsibility for the hurt and pain they've caused in my life. But as I grow in years and hopefully in wisdom, I'm beginning to realize that forgiveness is not denying our pain and suffering. In fact, if we minimize our pain, what has happened to us, or repress and gloss over it, seeking some kind of rationalization that what happened to us was not really all that bad, then we can never really forgive. Because forgiveness is only possible when we acknowledge the impact of the offense, the pain of another person's actions or attitudes in our lives. Forgiveness does not condone what happened before, but neither is forgiveness beholden to the past. While there is certainly a component to forgiveness that requires us to look back in our lives, forgiveness is ultimately about our desire to move forward. Forgiveness is also not a matter of putting other persons on probation, waiting for them to do something wrong so that we can take back the forgiveness we gave to begin with. And forgiveness also does not require we forget past hurts. Presbyterian minister, writer, and retreat leader Marjorie Thompson writes, 
To forgive is to make a conscious choice to release the person who has wounded us from the sentence of our judgment. However justified that judgment may be, it represents a choice to leave behind our resentment and desire for retribution, however fair such punishment may seem. Forgiveness involves excusing persons from the punitive consequences they deserve because of their behavior. The behavior remains condemned, but the offender is released from its effects as far as the forgiver is concerned. Forgiveness means the power of the original wound's power to hold us trapped is broken. I want to pause for a moment right now to lift up eight prayers of forgiveness that we can walk through together. Join me. There are times at school, at home, at work, or in a group when my anger has gotten the best of me, when I have hurt or been hurt by another. During these times, what am I to do, Lord? I look to you, O God, for guidance. Sometimes I get caught up in my own hatred and fear of other people whom I do not know, and I begin to judge them out of that fear and ignorance. I look to you, O God, for guidance. There have been times when I feel that I have simply gone too far, when I think that there is no way anyone can forgive me for what I have done. I look to you, O God, for guidance. There was a time when I turned my back on a friend. I didn't mean to hurt this person as much as I did, but the damage is now done. What can I do now that the hurt has grown so deep? I look to you, O God, for guidance. When I look back over the past years, I remember a time when I came under the judgment of a lot of people for falling short of my values. I knew I was not living up to the person you created to me to be, and I knew that my actions hurt other people as well. I look to you, O oh God, for guidance. Before I move on with my life, I need to reconcile with my family, especially my parents. There were times when I built walls instead of bridges between us, gave in to anger instead of healing, and sought to hurt instead of help. I look to you, O oh God, for guidance. There is this one person, Lord, who constantly gets on my case, who has always been a thorn in my side. We cannot get along, and yet we are frequently around each other. What am I to do about this situation? I look to you, O oh God, for guidance. Finally, Lord, there is my friend, the one that I still have not forgiven, the one who hurt me, who acts as if everything is fine. But deep down, it isn't, at least not with me. I look to you, O oh God, for guidance. I find that the possibility and challenge of forgiveness is best told in the stories we live and the stories we tell ourselves are true. There is a story of one prisoner of war who asked another, have you forgiven your captors yet? I will never do that, the second one answered then they still have you in prison, don't they? The first one replied. A story comes from church council records in 16th century Switzerland. Asked to repeat the Lord's Prayer, a man pretended he did not know it because he knew that if he said it, he would have to forgive the merchant who cheated him, and that was something he had no intention of doing. Rabbi Harold Kushner tells another story. A woman in my congregation comes to see me. She is a single mother, divorced, working to support herself and her three young children. She says to me, since my husband walked out on us, every month is a struggle to pay our bills. I have to tell my kids we have no money to go to the movies while he's living it up with his new wife in another state. How can you tell me to forgive him? I answer her, I'm not asking you to forgive him because what he did was acceptable. It wasn't. It was mean and selfish. I'm asking you to forgive because he doesn't deserve the power to live in your head and turn you into a bitter, angry person. I'd like to see him out of your life emotionally as completely as he is out of it physically, but you keep holding on to him. 
You're not hurting him by holding on to that resentment, but you are hurting yourself. And finally, Frederick Buechner writes in his book, Wishful Thinking, to forgive somebody is to say one way or another, you have done something unspeakable and by all rights, I should call it quits between us. Both my pride and my principles demand no less. However, although I make no guarantees that I will be able to forget what you've done and that we may both carry the scars for life, I refuse to let it stand between us. I still want you for my friend. To accept forgiveness means to admit that you've done something unspeakable that needs to be forgiven, and thus both parties must swallow the same thing, their pride. This seems to explain what Jesus means when he says to God, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus is not saying that God's forgiveness is conditional upon our forgiving others. In the first place, forgiveness that's conditional isn't really forgiveness at all, just fair warning. And in the second place, our unforgivingness is among those things about us that we need to have God forgive us most. What Jesus apparently is saying is that the pride that keeps us from forgiving is the same pride that keeps us from accepting forgiveness. And will God please help us do something about it? When somebody you've wronged forgives you, You're spared the dull and self-diminishing throb of a guilty conscience. When you forgive somebody who has wronged you, you spared the the dismal corrosion of bitterness and wounded pride. For both parties, forgiveness means the freedom again to be at peace inside their own skins and to be glad in each other's presence. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You welcome us when we are weak in faith. Uphold your church throughout the world. Make it a place of welcome. Strengthen faith through Bible studies and Sunday schools, confirmation classes, and youth ministries. Nurture new ministries of education and growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The heights of the heavens show us the vastness of your steadfast love. Have compassion on your creation. Where human selfishness has brought ruin and destruction, we look to you to heal, renew, and redeem your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your ways known to the nations. Speak kindness to our bitter grudges. Settle our hearts when we want to settle accounts with violence. Bless our leaders with patience and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Bring healing and justice wherever harm is dealt. Provide vindication for all who are oppressed. Free victims of human trafficking and forced labor. Deliver all who are bound by debt. Feed all who hunger and guard refugees fleeing famine, poverty, and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to forgive. Remind us that you do not always accuse us. Still our tongues when we are tempted to pass judgment and argue over opinions. Make this congregation a community of mercy for one another and for all neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Whether we live or whether we die, we are yours. We thank you for those who have showed us faithfulness, for the knees that taught us how to bow to you and the tongues that taught us to praise you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Share that sign of peace with one another. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our privilege and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the fruits of God for the people of God. Come to the table. All are welcome. For the gifts of God are free. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.